All right, so today we're going to be talking about exchange rates. Exchange rates, in some sense, is very simple, especially for any of you who have traveled abroad. We use U.S. dollars here. Most countries use something else. An exchange rate is simply allowing us to exchange one currency for another. So, for example, if we were looking at U.S. dollars for Mexican pesos, we could say that one dollar is equal to 10 pesos. But this begins to highlight where the exchange rate, working with exchange rates can get a little challenging, can get a little difficult, because it's exactly equal to say that one tenth or a dime for US dollars would be equal to one peso. So we can always write any exchange rate either direction, dollars per foreign currency or foreign currency per dollar. Because of this, because we can write every exchange rate in two different ways, that's where the confusion can come in. And you'll see as we get into the graph that if you're looking at dollars per foreign currency graph and you're reasoning something out, and what you're reasoning out applies to the foreign currency per dollar graph, it's not that you're wrong. You've just got to be sure what you're doing so you apply the right reasoning to the graph. Another thing we want to understand when looking at exchange rates is how they're changing in relationship to each other. We're going to look into all the reasons why they might change, but right now we just want to understand how to interpret a change. So let's say we're starting with $1 equals one pound, that's a British pound, and then some things change and the new exchange rate today is $1.50 is equal to one pound. What does that mean for dollars and pounds? What we're asking here is which currency has gotten stronger, which one has become more valuable or able to buy more units of the other currency. So if we look at it from that point of view, we see that one pound used to get us one dollar. Now one pound gets us a dollar and another half of a dollar. So the pound is getting stronger. The, the term for that is appreciation. So we see in this case that the pound has appreciated. So by definition, the other currency, since this is always defined in terms of each other, in this case dollars and pounds, when cur one currency gets stronger or appreciates, the other currency will be getting weaker and the other term for that is depreciated. So this just means that in terms of purchasing power in terms of the other currency, when your currency appreciates, your currency goes farther when you exchange it for the other currency and it makes things in that currency, in that country, it makes the goods seem cheaper. Um, think about if you were traveling abroad and let's say you're going to Europe and the country you're going to are using the euro. If the euro has been weak relative to the dollar, when you take your dollars in to get euros so that you can do stuff and have fun in Europe, you're going to find you get quite a lot of dollars, relative, excuse me, quite a lot of euros for each one of your dollars. If instead you go a few months later and now the euro is relatively strong, the euro has appreciated, you could find yourself in a situation where your dollar doesn't feel like it goes very strong, excuse me, it goes very far. So that's the concept of appreciation and depreciation. So continuing on looking at dollars and pounds in exchange for each other, we're going to make the executive decision that we're going to focus on dollars per foreign currency. So we're asking the question, how many dollars do you get per pound? So the picture we're actually going to end up drawing is going to be, in correct terminology here, the market for pounds in exchange for dollars. So when you draw your supply-demand graph, your price is dollars per foreign currency. So that's what we're always going to be doing here. In this case, since our foreign currency is the pound, it's dollars per pound. And that means that the quantity access is the number of units of foreign currency. So in this example, it's the number of pounds. All right, this is important because you have to be clear which market you're looking at. If I was drawing this whole market again, pound per dollars, there'd be slightly different meaning here. Um, they're both correct. As I said before, you just have to be clear what you're looking at. All right, so we have dollar per pound number of pounds, and then we're going to have our demand curve, four pounds, right? The demand curve is going to be uh, labeled whatever the quantity is. This is the demand in order to get pounds in exchange for dollars. 
and then the supply will be the supply of pounds in exchange for dollars. So de supply of pounds, demand of, demand of four pounds. Um, and that's how we draw the market for pounds in exchange for dollars. The next thing is to think about who is demanding pounds, who is supplying pounds. We're talking about a foreign exchange market. We're talking about the market. You can imagine this giant pool that exists with all these foreign currencies floating around, and you walk up and supply the currency you currently use in your, current, in your country in order to pull out units of currency for some other foreign country. So if that's the visual image you can have here, then when you think about the demand for pounds, that's somebody walking up to this big pool trying to pull pan pounds out. That's because they don't already have pounds. So the demand for pounds has to be coming from the U.S. The ones who have dollars, but they'd rather have pounds for this purpose. We'll explain the purposes in a second. Um, and so that's where the demand for pounds is coming from. So the how many British pounds people in America want to trade for the American dollars they already have, that is what the demand for pounds is. And that's going to mean that the things that affect the demand for pounds is going to be things that affect people in the U.S. So that's very important you get that down. Rewind this, play this over and over again until this gets in your head. Um, the supply of pounds, though, again, imagine our little pool here of all the foreign currencies in it. So somebody's coming up and supplying pounds into this pool in order to pull out dollars. And the reason it's in order to pull out dollars is we're just looking at this exchange of dollar and pounds. So who already has pounds is the British. They're the ones that use pounds at home. So they supply the pounds in order to pull out dollars. So the UK and the things that are happening in the UK, that's on the supply side here. So it's going to be very important as we go forward to just have this understanding right now that this is a supply of pounds into this foreign exchange pool in order to pull out dollars. And that's going to be all the British people who are supplying their pounds to get dollars. And then on this side of the market, we have the demand for pounds, the people who don't already have pounds is the U.S., and they're, they're supplying their dollars in in order to pull the dollars out. Now, wherever this market has its equilibrium, um, that will be the equilibrium exchange rate, the actual rate they're trading for, and then there would be also be some equilibrium quantity. So let's say for now that it is a dollar fifty per pound, okay? The next thing we want to do is turn our attention to these curves and what factors will increase or decrease the demand or the supply. Uh, but we will save that for the next video.